Hello everybody, and welcome back to more Let's Play Final Fantasy VIII. Okay, so, in this part, we are going to be taking out a few more of the bosses in Ultimisius Castle. And they can be quite annoying, and might be extremely easy to take out. <sighs> I'll explain. Now, one thing that I will be doing is, I'm actually cutting out a lot of backtracking because it's very annoying in this area. I'm only going to be getting stuff that's of significance. For example, in this area around the fountain, there's actually a key you want to pick up known as the Treasure Vault Key. In order to verse one of the bosses later on in Ultimisius Castle, we're going to need this key. As well as there is another key in an area coming up. Now, this area that we're actually entering right now is going to be very significant in the future, but not necessarily right now. So we're just going to have to wait it down along the line for the thing that's going to be significant. All right. So this place, you want to walk very slowly to pick up this key, even though it looks kind of like a feather for some reason. Yeah. If for whatever reason you run on that bridge, the key would actually fall off. So just try to take small steps and just walk over the bridge and then you'll be able to pick up the item. Now, the next boss that we're going to be versing is a dragon named Titmat. Titmat is... He can be dangerous and he can... He doesn't have to be, depending on when you verse him. Um, for example... A lot of people like the verse Titmat last because he is a very powerful boss in this uh, dungeon. The reason why people want to verse him last is because they would like to have at least their limit breaker released and have the ability to cast aura on themselves in order to get that. But I don't really find it too much significant in this, especially since he's already weakened enough since we're low level that it's really insignificant to uh, worry about that. So we can find him on pretty much an even ground without, a, without having to worry too much about it. Now, to tell you one thing, Titmat, unlike most of the bosses in this dungeon, has at least a base health of 20,000. Unlike other bosses, Tripoint, which I actually learned the name because I looked in my guide earlier, just to verify what the hell's name was. Who goes down in one damn hit. Now, the one thing that's unique about Titmat is, one, he's a freaking recolor of Bahamut. And two, he has the ability to cast Dark Flare. Now, as you're seeing on the screen, he's spelling out D-A, and he's going to try and say Dark Flare. But you can pretty much kill him within that time frame, depending on when you take him out. Especially if you take him out dead last, you can easily kill him with a limit breaker without even having to try. Now, one thing I'm showing off is the limit, uh, limit breaker, sorry, the summon Eden. Eden has the longest summon in the entire game. So much so that it's it's just crazy. Now, to say the least, Eden is actually one of the only um, GFs in the entire game that can actually break the damage limit of 9,999. There is a limit breaker that Quistus can use, can break the, ga uh, the uh, damage limit as well, but the reason why you can break the damage limit is because if you have boost on this guy and you keep pressing square forever, yeah, I think it's gonna break the damage limit. But honestly, this, this summon is so long, but is it worth it? Not necessarily. Especially considering that Knights of the Round and Final Fantasy VII was actually a better summon because at least through the entire sequence, they were doing so much damage and basically killing everything with it. In this game, using Eden is just kind of like, eh, whatever. But, sadly, Titmat didn't use Dark Flare, and now his ass is grass. Or more like Stardust. Uh, if anything, nah, 
I was thinking he looks kind of like Stardust Dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh, but no, no, no. No, if anything, he looks like Red Demon Dragon. <laughs> uh, God damn it, why am I... Uh, I, I love Yu-Gi-Oh, I don't care. I don't care. Anyways, so with that done, we are actually going to the next area. Now, I'm going to release magic because I would like to be able to cast Meltdown without having to use Doom Train. It's just one little thing, but hey, I like it. All right. So the next area that we're going to is actually the art gallery. Now, the art gallery is actually pretty unique because I really like the puzzle in this next area. Um, what the uh, art gallery does is there's a bunch of paintings surrounding uh, this one blank painting that has its title erased. And your job is to actually figure out the title of the painting. Now, you're thinking, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? Well, there is a clock actually on the very bottom level that you can actually see from a bigger vantage point. Now, each of them has a hand on three numbers. Now, your job is actually to look at these numbers and correspond them to different paintings scattered about the entire art gallery. And if you put them in the right substantial order of hour, minute, and seconds, then you would get the actual painting uh, name itself. I, I couldn't think of the word name. Huh. I, don't, I don't know. But I really enjoy this puzzle because it actually makes you think. And I wish there was more stuff like this in the game. Just, I don't know. I, Final Fantasy VIII can be very empty at times where it just feels like it's more combat oriented than anything. But at the same time, if you're like me and got Encounter None, as soon as you got Diablos, then it's just not really much of a game. It's kind of like you're just running through and just battling bosses. Honestly, that's what happens when you do a low level game. It's you're trying to avoid battles like the goddamn plague, but honestly, <sighs> it's kind of annoying. Don't get me wrong. Now, on this upper level, if you went to the actual other side, you can actually see the clock from a vantage point. You can actually see a small bit of it from here, but not significantly enough to actually see where the hands are pointing to. Now, like I mentioned before, each one of the painting has a corresponding number. Now, they're not labeled by the actual numbers themselves, but the clock is actually in Roman numeral, and the paintings have letters in English, or not really English. I don't know what language it's supposed to be in. I... But what they do have is they do have English letters in Roman numerals. So... If you figure out the painting, it's based on trying to figure out which Roman numerals correspond with the paintings based on what words are in the paintings. So after going through almost all the uh, art gallery paintings, we have to figure out the title. So, the title of this picture is... Viarium Vigil Viato, and that translates into In the Garden Sleeps a Messenger. Honestly, I really love this puzzle. So, our next boss is actually pretty fun to fight. Normally. The next boss we're going to be fighting is Trauma. Trauma has a few abilities. It has the ability to summon these little droids that attack us. That's pretty cool. It has like a super death laser beam and stuff like that. And it's pretty fun to versus boss. Here's my tip. Cast Meltdown, drop down its defense as a zero, then start wailing on it. If it summons any of the little pod things, kill them first because it heals from them. Now, why wasn't he fun this time? Well, Remember Tripoint? No. No. No! Why? Dead. Not again! Ugh. 
Yeah. Trauma didn't even get to attack me. Ugh. My god, this is the second boss in a row that has done such a thing to me. Uh, yeah. Under normal circumstances, Trauma would be a very fun fight. And Trauma actually gave me a lot more difficulty when I was actually practicing this dungeon. It kicked my ass. I mean, not so much that it killed me, but it was actually doing a lot of damage to me. But this time, I whooped its ass. I don't know if that's recording luck or recording curse, because honestly, that just makes me depressed. Now, this right here is a mark of the recording curse. It's like you see the light, and now you see the darkness. Here's our next boss in the armory. Not this is in the armory, this is the prison. This is Red Giant. Now, the Red Giant is actually a, re a recolor of the stupid Iron Giant. Honestly, it's, it's really a weird boss. Now, one thing about this boss is it has extremely high magic defense as well as physical defense. So your objective is to cast Meltdown on him in order to drop his defenses down so you can actually wail on him and not have to worry about anything. Problem is this son of a bitch didn't want to be dropped to zero. He's just like, fuck you, I'm resistant today. Seriously, it took me four times. Ugh. It's honestly a very frustrating boss when you cannot cast Meltdown on this motherfucker. So annoying as hell, but what the heck are you gonna do? So I had to wait a few times and actually in order to do this. Now, one thing that I don't like about this dungeon is a lot of the bosses are recolors of either former bosses or enemies we first before. The one thing that I actually liked about the previous boss trauma is it was an original design. We had an original design, Tripoint Crystal we had uh, Sphinxara. It, they were all original. Titmat, Red Giant, they, they're basically recolors and redesigns, which to me, eh, I don't really like it so much. But at least now we can kick this son of a bitch's ass once I actually get Renosikin. Ugh, there we go. Okay, Skull, murder this son of a bitch. There we go. Now, one thing that is kind of crazy about this boss is, unlike most of them that just blow up, this boss actually rusts to death. To me, that's actually very disturbing. And that death just seems more dramatic. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, I like that death animation. It rusted to death instead of exploded like every other boss. How the hell do half the bosses explode? It's like Michael Bay decide, oh, yep, let's do this. Explosions everywhere. I don't know. I just like uh, if each boss had their own death animation instead of like dissolving and blowing up. Anyways, I'm getting the command ability and let's get the F out of here. <sighs> All right. Annoying boss was annoying, but we don't have to deal with it anymore. So anyways, with that, we are actually finished with most of the bosses. We actually only have two left, and we're actually going to verse the next boss as soon as the next part starts. Because <laughs> he's actually in a room nearby. But, as always, people, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time as we take on the last of the bosses and then we begin our descent on the super boss oh yeah and Altamisia. oh yeah that's why we're here in the castle later